ticking. When those go low, you go high. Higher. So we've gone low. So you've got to go higher. <laughs> so can you all look they're down probably, on us? They probably don't even know what we're talking about. We usually have the camera up here and I always say to Mark, why is it up there? And he's put it on the table and it's so much nicer. Do you think? Yes. Do you think? Everything is at eye level. I don't know. Like that? Mark, right, how many years have we been doing this? This Two years? Two, two three, yeah. two and a so half, So every years. single day, Mark insists and he says that this box, I don't know where it is, that the channel couldn't survive without our first I mean, aid box. I'm being light-hearted. Our first aid box, I know it is, where we put the, the computer, so the computer is here, and then he puts the camera up here. <laughs> and I say to him all the time, why do we do, do you know, that? In fact, I do know why. Why? Because whenever you're filming with a celebrity or presenter or anything like that, yeah. and you're shooting them, they all, well, you're always encouraged from the day dot to put the camera ever so slightly higher looking down than the chin because it will help with any sense of bagginess oh, under the chin. Oh, but it gives me a bad neck for it to have a bit of well, bagginess. Well, yeah, you might have a bad neck, but you don't have a sick, you know, oh, you don't God, have... Oh, I'll have the bagginess and not have the bad neck. Thank or you. Or we could do this. Well, that is the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> How beautiful do we look from down oh, yeah. here? <laughs> <laughs> um... I've got a heavy head. That's what I've got. Somebody over on Instagram was just talking about how I feel a bit odd and somebody said, oh, I've got a heavy head. A heavy head. And then it made me think, I was upstairs. Did you hear me laughing? I to myself. So. I wondered what was going on. So basically I was upstairs and I go, God, I feel awful. I feel like I'm going to collapse. And then I suddenly found the word collapse so funny. You know, when people would say, well, she's collapsed. And, and people, you know, like if you say someone's collapsed, People are always going to go, oh, my God. <laughs> but and I thought, and I was imagining people, you saying, oh, now just collapsed. And people go, no, I'll tell you, why, I'll tell you exactly me, why me, it's funny. And me thinking, well, it's not that bad. I've just collapsed. <laughs> I'm going to show you why it collapsed. Oh, are you going to do a collapse? No, because collapse. Oh, do collapse. Collapse. No, You're so no, good at... No, well, no, we want it up there. We're so, not going to well, see it. Why are we going high again? <laughs> Hang on, I'm going to turn it round. So collapse is, you know, fall is like that. Right. Like that. Collapse is... Yeah. <laughs> That's like, what I mean. bits of you kind of wibble wobble. Exactly. Down. But it was like, if you say someone's collapsed, the whole room is going to go silent. Whatever anyone's doing, if, and then somebody's going, oh, she collapsed. And yeah. people would ring other people and say, you know, your nan's collapsed. Has she collapsed? <laughs> it is a and sense then, of total, you just fall to pieces like like a clutch of sticks yeah. yeah and and then isn't it funny how just the strangest things can tickle you at the strangest times well and today it was the idea of different. me today it was the idea of me collapsing i i was at the fridge the other day and kooks saw me i think maddie might have done too i, I you did yeah. i swooned I oh, love it. swooned yeah i was at that's the door. not as funny as collapsing I was at the door. Mind, mind your really heavy head i was at the door and they sort of go like this i opened the door and <laughs> oh yeah, it was funny, Maddie. I thought it was going to pass. It was like it was glitching. Maddie said it was like it was glitching. Like in a computer game. <laughs> Collapsing with laughter now, says Della. Now I've just seen Faith pop up there. Faith did a do you proud last night with my gut conversation, and I said Faith needs to know about a bovril. Can she have it in um, her fasting period? And it was Tim played a bit, didn't he? And he went, <gasps> no. But then late last night, I got this text, and I thought I have to read this out to um, Faith from Lee. Faith has also asked for a recipe from the Curly Cooks. Yeah, uh, to, to where it says, he said, I'm now listening to the whole lies as, live as I'm hooked on it, but feel compelled to just tell you my current favourite thing that has been said, which was, you've got a wiener off the brothel, I'm afraid. <laughs> That was from Lee late last night, Faith, so I thought you'd enjoy that. I'm so sorry the news wasn't better. I did, I did actually think he was going to say Did you ask that. him about soft drinks, diet drinks, fizzy drinks? No, I just no. didn't have time. But, but I know what that, he would say, don't have them. But he said that coffee, no. coffee, coffee, coffee is good for you. People who drink coffee live longer, it's as simple as that, he said, because oh, it, it prevents well. heart disease, simple as that. Um, Does, even decaffeinated. Oh, some people are asking that. What about yeah. tea? No, tea, green tea. If okay. you don't like coffee, the next thing to have is green tea. And if you struggle with having green tea, buy the Dragonfly Spearmint Green Tea because it tastes like Moroccan mint tea and it's delicious. 
But I know what he would say about fizzy drinks. He is absolutely horrified by the whole artificial sweetener. It totally fucks your gut. You know something that's really interesting? In case you didn't see it, Mark's going to put the live up here on YouTube, I think after this. Six o'clock. Oh, six o'clock. Tonight. He... He talked about... I could put it after this. Do you want it after this? Put it after I'll this. I'll pop it up after this. This is just so fascinating that every single person that they did a study on who had anxiety and depression, every person, had real problems with their gut microbiome. I'm just going to put that out there. So if you want to research that more and look into it, also why antidepressants don't work for some people is because they can't work with the gut biome. Also... Why paracetamol doesn't work with some people because of their gut biome. Why? You know how your mum always says, I can't have whatever it is, one of the painkillers she can't have. Diazepam? No, no, one of the painkillers she can't have it be because of her gut biome. It, honestly, my, it was such... My mum's gut, I, I just dread Well, I started the live by saying, how funny is this that Nanny Di bought me this book? It and Nanny so Di cares ironic. nothing for health. No. Um, but Nanny Di, watch it. Morning, Elliot. Watch it, you might be interested, Morning, Nanny Di. Tim Spector, I thought Tim was the postman. Who's Tim, says Leo Vibefeela. Tim Spector, Professor Tim Spector. He's like, when he's the leading chap on all things gut. He's a professor of epidemiology at the King at King's College and also consultant physician. But, you know, going back to this... I've forgotten I've interviewed him. This before. is obviously a back reference to all of this and then we'll get into some of the story. Unfortunately, I'm afraid... Guys, they're accused for Harry. Um, it's literally the main news story running, apart from also the terrible news that the government are trying to rush through this uh, prevention of strikes or, or the need to keep minimal kind of working practices in place for certain industries. Now, I just, I, I just about. think that's awful. Labour have said they're going to immediately repeal it when they get in. So we've got this, what ludicrous governance, really, that you have one set of people doing this to appeal to their party, but then the other set of people the, are coming in. At, it's one of the basic foundations of a democracy. Yeah, your ability Your right to, to strike. I mean, we can't, as no. a nation, take that line down. Well, no. But, I mean, remember, well, we that, Thatcher rolled back on so much. But anyway, anyway. Um, but no, going back to the gut thing, I always remember being fascinated. Does anyone else remember these sorts of references? When you sort of watch medieval history, mm. they talk about the humours. They yes. talk about the bile. Yeah. You've got black bile, white bile, red and now, bile. Now, when I asked him yesterday, why do people call the gut the second brain? He said, mm. because there's so many nerves. Well, you can, you can watch the live. So well, the connection know, yeah. to the brain and the gut. So again, would explain anxiety, depression, not in, not in all people that have it, but this connection between an unhealthy gut and therefore an unhealthy brain. I know my gut. I swear to God, you could improve so much if you looked after your gut. I know for a fact I'm thinking with my gut when I search out the Nutella. God knows what all that Nutella's done to your gut. It might have lined it. <laughs> oh, Maddie! Not yes, Maddie is my right wing man, woman. Right wing man. That's What's it called when people say wing man? A wing man. <laughs> wing woman. Not your right, your right wing man. <laughs> so what is she, Ian Duncan my Smith? <laughs> <laughs> my wing woman. She's there. It's funny actually because quite often when I'm out, she takes over my role with you, doesn't she? And mm. tells you off if you haven't eaten and all of that. Yeah. Very um, lucky man. Ka Ka Catriona Balf is the woman Katrina. from Belfast that you like. Katrina? Mm. As Abe has it. Oh. Uh, she was in, she's in Outlander. Oh, thank you for that, Alison. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, yeah. Mm. It made me want to watch Outlander, actually. Thank you for reminding me what it was. I Hi loved it. Hi, the family. Hi, the Creeper family. Hi, Creeper don't forget, family. Don't forget, drop, send your... Follow the link, pop your address, and 24-month cards will come out. Um, Jennifer Whalen, Whalen, Whalen. Nadia, if you have a headache, do you take paracetamol or do you try holistic options first? I, I, I will. It depends what it is. If I very, it depends what kind of a headache it is. Um, you know, me taking holistic medicine is complementary. So sometimes I'll take a paracetamol. Sometimes I'll take a remedy. But of course, there are hundreds of different remedies depending on what your symptoms are of the headache. So yeah. Can I just say though, going back to the gut, I, I can't escape this. Bloody hell! I can't believe we've got him um, talking about the gut, guys. You was there any you conversation you. about alcohol? Um, no, but we, do, I mean, the, we we were on for nearly an hour. I could have kept him there no, for no, two No, 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 I know, but so. I'm curious to know whether, whether there's that sort of, you know how in health circles, I mm. sometimes think 
that the, the decision as to whether alcohol is beneficial to a human or not beneficial he, he to a human right. is based upon whether the person doing the research likes a glass of wine at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he's... Why I, what, I would never have chatted to him if he was the sort of person that says, you've got to cut this, this, this out. He just tells you... I mean, he actually... You know, I think he, he occasionally eats meat, occasionally has a glass of wine. And I think moderation, moderation would be... Everything. But of course, we all know that alcohol isn't... And if you are going to drink alcohol, you know, red wine, organic, profanols, there are... Pol not pol can't, still can't say the bloody word. Jaeger mouth? Yeah, was it? But, but, Jaeger, Jaeger you know, mouse. I'm sure he would say one glass of wine with dinner occasionally. I would because my, my thing around uh, fizzy drinks at the moment, I'm sort of on the Joe Wicks eating plan to complement my, my, wor uh, my, my workout schedule. Um, and, for, and, you know, he says avoid all kind of, you know, uh, fizzy drinks, carbonated drinks. And for me, I, I think there has to be some reward in the system somewhere. And if you can't have alcohol as an end-of-day reward, you know, is it total abstinence to a diet I don't, Coke? Or... I don't think... Well, he would just say... It's infuriating it's sometimes. He would say it's up to you. He just gives you the science-based evidence. Mm. On what it would do. Anyway, we're going to pop the, we're gonna gonna pop the film the up article. after this. Um, obviously, you can see Nadia's involved at the moment in a Tim <laughs> Spector loving. Um, I haven't been able to get a word in edgeways. And in fact, she was so exhausted. It was almost post coital yesterday, wasn't it? You were Mark, exhausted. Shut up! <laughs> For fuck's sake. <laughs> um, what do you, how are you guys? Love the body coach. Co Karen Rogers, can I say, I love the body coach food too. It's, it's really tasty. Uh, Ooh, happy, happy birthday, Fizzy Steph. Fizzy drinks, page 39 to 40, 358 to 60 and 397. Oh, God, put a highlighter through it. <laughs> um, Lee Peer asked an interesting thing, or it wants to know an interesting thing, about the relationship between the gut and building muscle. It's a good one. Especially for me, I want to know about the gut and building muscle around the gut because I'd rather well, have gut well, muscle than gut fat. That, that's the book that I was doing, I was chatting to him about. The... the your, if your gut biome is in a mess, it will be much harder for you to lose belly fat. And the internal fat, it's the internal fat you want to get rid of, isn't it? Mm. That's the thing that wraps around your organs, your heart. And also, that, well, but one thing I have noticed today is I've, I've, for the first time, been able to go to the next set of my belt notches. You're looking great. No, 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 but amazing. I mean, it, it's up and show everybody No, no, yourself. I'm not. I'm not a child. <laughs> I'm not at school. I'm not going to do I'm that. I love doing that oh to him. God. Just stand up. The other chairs. day, <laughs> the other day, my nan used to scream across the road in Boscombe, which is a little sort of town outside Bournemouth. She'd shout across the road, do you need a wee, Marky? And I would Thank literally you, want Jenny. the earth to open up. And I said this to you the other day. And in public, you you said something really loud, like, do you need a poo? No, I didn't. You said something I that was so shocking. And I turned that. around and I said, you are worse than I, my nan. I, I've married my nan. Listen, that's a total lie. I would never say that. It's not a total lie. In fact, I think you said something worse than that. It was incredibly, excruciatingly embarrassing. Anyway, anyway, on that. I note. think I might be a little bit embarrassed about shouting, would you like a poo? So I think it's highly unlikely that I did that. Okay, well, I, right, this story I really like. Okay, so queues uh, have been forming to prink, pick, prink up, to pick up Prince Harry's uh, memoir. <laughs> you read into this story, 12 people were waiting outside WH Smith's and Victoria were Station. They? 12 people, but they it? were outnumbered by the press and photographers who oh were my thrusting God. books into their hands. Uh, and a, I am going to read it for you guys so that you don't have to. But this is an interesting line. Staff proceeded to immediately put half price stickers onto copies. But that often happens. Somebody said this the other day that they do it so they can get into the bestsellers. Oh, it's so to drive it up. I'm sure it would get into the bestsellers anyway, wouldn't it? Um, so anyway, it, obviously so, shops opened at 12 a.m. And obviously, you know, the last time there was a queue for, was, was for a different Harry. That was Harry Potter. Do you remember the queues that used to develop for that? Um, so fans have been waiting at Victoria Station. Have, do you know anyone who's been queuing for Prince Harry's book? I mean, why would you queue? Why, why would you queue? Why don't you just get it? If I'm barefoot it now, I could get it by lunch. Just lunchtime. get it at lunchtime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's ridiculous. <coughs> anyway, so obviously, but the, I think the some press people wants like. Story I think some people like the event, don't they? It's like an event to think, right? I'm going to go and I'll give you one of the first people to get the book. At Victoria Station. Well, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I guess it's an event of sorts. Oh, midnight queues. Yeah, midnight queues. Yeah, absolutely. But um, anyway, so the press, you're, you're going to see photos of people queuing. and uh, But why were people excite, expecting queues? I'm sure even Harry wasn't. Mm. I know what you mean. It's an odd one. But this story that uh, popped up is... Probably bloggers. Prince yes. Harry publishes text messages 
or has pub now what see what's going to happen now the press have run at the most obvious headlines mm. and there will have been a clamoring of sorts for the most arresting headlines and for me i'm always interested in the more nuanced stuff yeah. around things and i think yeah. some of the people who were queuing i think six of them uh said something along the lines of and i think this is fair and a number of you guys said this i want to see What's been talked about in the context? Yeah, of, of and I agree, I, and I think it's you know it's imperative that we mm. that we read it too because, I mean, we haven't been able to, so we've been responding to what we've seen in the well, press. I've read it but in it Spanish. I mean, I I hate it in a minute way when when one line is taken out from loose women and put mm. on a on, on a you know, mail online. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. And then, and then, oh my God, it's just it, it, so. And th but, but the problem is, so many of these lines are so shocking. Well, they are so shocking. But he's, he's shared the text. See, this I think is again mm. a certain line has been crossed. Uh, he shares the text correspondence between Meghan and Kate uh, regarding uh, Princess Charlotte's bridesmaid dress at Meghan Markle's and you oh, know and Harry's God. wedding. What the actual word for yeah, word? Yeah, yeah. Picture and of the text. Apparently, Kate was waiting for feedback from Meghan. Uh, this was taking too long. Uh, Kate was, by all accounts, insisting that all the dresses need to be made. Now, I think words like insisting. So, for example, the way this is reported. It's the paper saying, and Kate insisted. Insisted isn't in quotes. It sounds ah. like I'm splitting hairs. No, but, it's but this important. that's important that's because the then what's in quotes is all the dresses need to be made, need to be remade. So this very much kind of characterises Kate as being extremely obstreperous and incredibly sort of curt. Whilst meanwhile, Meghan was lying on the floor crying because she was trying to sobbing on the floor, uh, trying to deal and with that's, the drama. That's of, inverted. Yeah, trying to deal with the Big. drama of her father now. I I think she was trying to deal with a huge drama of her father. It's whether, horrible. Whether you believe, lots of people split on that, saying she's treated him appallingly, et cetera, et cetera. But she was dealing, I think, I remember at the time, it was a real kind of heavy time of news, it was wasn't it? Absolute, toing and throwing and I mean, that kind whatever of stuff. you think of Meghan, totally horrific. And I think the way that her family have behaved, not her wonderful mother, who I think is just a lovely woman, but the way that her father and her stepsister have behaved, behaved all of that time and since, has been absolutely appalling. Mm. I mean, to me, they seem to have stirred up so much hate and anger, didn't mm. they? And of course the press have gobbled, gobbled them up, but I... So, yeah, you, can you imagine all of that coming out when you've got this wedding that the whole of the world's... The world is going to be watching and your father is not coming to the wedding. I mean, just think of that just in your own like, private actually, life. I mean, but I'm amazed legally about this because he actually publishes exactly the quote from Kate, the text. So it says, Kate, quote, Charlotte's dress is too big, too long, too baggy. She cried when she tried it on at home. Megan, reply, mm. right. And I told, right. And right. I told you the tailor has been standing by since 8 a.m. here at KP, Crystal, uh, Kensington Palace. <laughs> Crystal Palace. <laughs> uh, can you take Charlotte to have it altered as the other mums are doing? I mean, as the other mums are doing. I mean, do you think that Kate was thinking, I'm the future Queen of England, don't talk to me like this, perhaps? Kate, no, all the dresses need to be remade. Meghan, I'm not sure what else to say. If the dress doesn't fit, then please take Charlotte to see AJ, who's their tailor. He's been, He's waiting, been waiting all day. day. Kate, fine. Uh, Harry also claims that Kate said she'd discussed the issue with her own wedding designer and they agreed. Um, you know, the, the uh, royal sources, now you never know whether these royal sources are sources or aren't sources. I mean, ketchup, brown sauce, I don't know. Um, but there's the suggestion that there's no trust left. I think you have to knock these royal sources, say, sort of stories. Well, it was like I was saying yesterday. But I do think, what do you think of the publishing of texts? Well, it was like I was saying yesterday, wasn't I, that, and, and we didn't know about this, I said, I wonder if William's spoken to Harriet. And I think, God, well, you couldn't, could you? Because if you phoned him, you'd think he might be recording it. If mm. you texted him, would he share the text? Mm. If you sent him an email, would you? And, and you think, God, there's no way they can contact him anymore. Mm. Mm. Well, Unless they're in the middle of a field. But then, but then again, that could still be recorded. Mm. And I think... Julie Art, there's a link in the description. I think I this is, again, I understand the pain. You know, if what he says is true, and I'm not suggesting there that he's lied when he said that other stories are put out by the royal family, but we don't know if that's true. We don't know if it's the people that work for the royal family. We don't know if there's paranoia involved. We don't know anything. But if he feels 
that time and time again, stories were put out to hurt his wife and upset his wife, then maybe he thinks that this is valid. Personally, nothing on this earth would make me publish a private text of somebody else. I, I mean, just couldn't imagine it. But you never know. Well, someone mentions there, why did she save it? Um, the message. Well, you do. I mean, you I don't can't. necessarily you get, save, yeah. I, mean, I don't it think you just necessarily save history. just in your history, isn't it? But... Um, someone else said even these could have been, even the sort of description of the text message exchange could be taken out of context. I agree exactly. entirely, but it's indisputable that he's published the text exchange, and I just wonder whether the, that is a that is a red line that one never crosses, regardless of the rights and wrongs of what's been going on. Uh, the other thing I would like to say, and so, I did, so, I did so, say so this. That what, what's obviously insinuated there is Megan was going through fucking hell mm. with her father, and there was this pettiness about mm. the. And that's why she was crying, because I think it's been made out that Meghan was just, like, crying over something. Throwing a so, hissy fit. Yeah. I do think, interestingly, it, I think it's fascinating that the British press haven't in one single headline in any way potentially suggested in their tone of coverage that what he's saying could be accurate. Have you noticed that? I mean, everyone is going for the headlines of... He's saying that there's more outcry at him saying something rather than what he's actually saying. And because, all of the coverage is about whether he, and why he said it rather than actually, no one's actually gone, oh, right, well, yeah. you know what, if this happened, I understand why he's feeling like this. Yeah, we have. We keep saying that. No, 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 no I know we have, like but none but of the press is, coverage. None the of the problem, press coverage. But the problem is, if you're being paid to share yeah, your yeah, truth, exactly, yeah. it takes it away. Now, if he was not getting paid a penny, mm. right? Or every penny he was getting paid was going to miss to people to people that had suffered injustice or through Invictus. the press or whatever. I think he is, he is contributing loads to it though. But, it, but it, no, but I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he should do this, but I'm saying what, how differently might people feel if they weren't gaining a single penny from it? Mm. And I think people mm. might be more... Inclined towards more inclined. being empathetic. But I think that people know the, the, the amounts are vast so that they, that will lead people to think, well, are they having to exaggerate because of the amount of money? What are, are the three other books going to be about? I'm guessing know. there'll be one that specifically, and this could cause all sorts of different kind of dramas, I think there'll be one specifically about his mum. I do. I think there'll be one very mm. much just about the complications emotionally mm. around his mum, and probably quite therapised, which is a big word at the moment, mm. about uh, grief. And, oh, you Megan's know, doing one that. next, says Faith. But, but, oh, well, that's going to go but, down like a but, bucket of sick, isn't it? I mean, I'm not suggesting it should, but it, given the press... I mean, I'm, and I also really want to know whether they're being protected from the reaction in the press or whether they simply see this as yet more confirmation of things being tilted against them. I think the fact that I can suggest, or we can suggest, all the coverage has been about how dare he, how awful, how can he say this, how can he do this? And, I, you know, and this is me and you have been to and fro in our sympathies or understandings. Mm. Maybe they just sit quite firmly on the side of that's the press, that's what they do, they only look at the negative. This other headline that came through, um, Harry says that Diana's ex-butler, this is curious, uh, do you remember, what's his name? Um, Paul Burrell, Burrell Burrell's uh, book, it made my blood boil because it was a tell-all book. Is Harry's book a tell-all book? I think what's going on here and again, it's out of context, but what is going on here is, is one of two things. It's either complete narcissism, where he believes what he's doing is totally fine and what everybody else is doing isn't, or it's because he, he feels that this is, he really knows the truth, this is his truth, he is the royal family, and Paul was telling exaggerated lies about his mother. So I think that's where that mm. will come from. But of course, he's laid himself bare to everyone saying, well, isn't that exactly what you're doing? Mm. But it's not, it's not the same. Because he worked for Diana and he, he, he said, I mean, I can't remember now, but he said some really, mm. Mm. really private stuff about her as well, didn't he? So he mm. Or maybe, again, because it's out of context, he could say, you know, it made my blood boil at the time, but here I am doing something similar because I just can't take any more the way that the, you know, the, the way that the institution is run. Lee, so. Sir Lee says differences. Harry is telling his. 
truth. Yeah. Yeah, in a sense. Yeah, Paul whereas was Paul was about. telling hers. Yeah. And so you can imagine somebody that's worked for your mum mm. and then goes and does book and, and one show after another off the back of your mother. I, I, I would find that hate. It's an incredibly, I mean, it is one of those sort of phenomenons that, that kind of just keeps flipping me back and forth. And my, I mean, know, my f a friend of mine yesterday, you know, she sent me a really good text on this. She goes, do you know what? And she's really oscillated with what she feels about it. She said, you know what, I'll watch that last interview. She said, and at times she's really disliked him, Harry. She said, he's so traumatised. She goes, he's not particularly bright. And he's naive. And he's, he, he is traumatised by... I mean, the fact that he said he we used didn't. to watch films of her to try and make him cry, to try and make himself cry, because he only cried once after his mother died. This is a 12-year-old boy. Mm. He was never allowed to speak about her. And there was an article today in The Independent talking about how so many, so many people are missing the point, the other point of what's going on with Harry here. And the fact that, yes, he has had therapy. There was a lot of joking about the fact that he's over-therapised and all of this yesterday. And actually, at a time when we're supposed to be encouraging more men to open up about the thing, of course, again, move the money thing out of it, because I, I totally get that. But this is a boy that has discovered how to get in touch in touch with his feelings, what we were talking about yesterday, wasn't it? And, and there's got to be some good conversation out of that as well. Melanie S says, why do we keep saying he's not bright? How do we know he's not bright? I don't well, think that's, I, I think I, quite, when, a, when it's quite I, a pejorative, it's, you know. Well, it's, I think it's an opinion. I mm. think by the way that he speaks. I don't, I don't think he's, he, he, he doesn't, like, when I, when, when I hear Megan speak, she's very, she seems, she comes across as very, very smart to me, very well-educated. Whereas he, I think, just, and I don't want to say this in, in a patronising way, he's a simpler person. I don't think he thinks in great depth, in great depth before and he's sort of struggling with all these new ideas and these new feelings that's how he comes across to me mm. what about you i just think i don't think we can say that i just don't think we know him i don't think one can say that no no i, but I, just I an no, opinion. no no i know i know I, I, I think he's i think people have informed an opinion like that because people want to believe the narrative that megan is in control of him no that, i don't and believe that that. diana and that diana's that. phrase that he's thick like me you know oh no it, no i wouldn't say thick i i wouldn't say thick but i think he I mean, I think he just comes across as a sort of mediocre sort of guy. He's not, he's not super bright. He, 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 he's not highly educated. He's, I don't see anything wrong with that. That's how I describe myself. I mean, exactly we talk, we talk, how I describe myself. Yeah. But I think in that, I think that he sometimes, you know, doesn't think through fully the consequences of his actions. If he can fly a I helicopter, says Rachel Bowden, he can't be thick. Well, I mean... No, no, I didn't say no. he was thick. I really don't want that to get people to keep saying that because I didn't say he was mm. thick. I do not think he's thick. No, in fact, his mother said that. It yeah, well, mother, that was so. horrible. It's just horrible. Yeah. It's horrible to say anyone's thick. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, finally, just before we move on to pets and how they help people in old age um, prolong their lives, the final thing I do think is curious is, and I wonder whether some, they've been slapped with something from lawyers, is his quite apparent sort of odd reversal on the, the idea mm. that he suggested the family was race, there was racism in the Oprah interview, and now yeah. he's very much claiming there isn't, that he didn't say that. Well, one of my friends texted me this morning and said, that was a really clumsy backpedalling. Do you think maybe that they're being sued by the royal family? But, mm. but I haven't seen what the apologies... Were. Well, the, I mean, it was it was running around yesterday. He said, uh, I didn't call the, the royal family racist. I didn't accuse them of racism. So this was in an interview. It's not in the book. Yes, yeah, sub subsequent to... Oh, I mean, subsequent... I think it's in one of the interviews. Yeah, I think it was. It could have been right. the interview one. But I mean... It, that is odd, isn't it? It is odd because it's it, even if he didn't say literally it, the inference was absolutely that. Um, but anyway. Everybody... I didn't say he's thick. Diana said he's thick. <laughs> yeah. Um, There's a friend of mine that said he doesn't seem very bright. He seems naive. He seems like he's traumatised by his... Um, Experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, he is. Pets may help protect brains of older adults as they age. And we know lots finds. of you have pets, so we thought this was I think cute. this is true. My nan was incredibly uh, articulate. Oh. I right think her up until cat 93. Kept her. because she just was thinking about the cat so mm. much. Was a bit. And she this talked is... to it all the time. But this is actually because of the release of oxytocin. So mm. you know, um, you know, when you can, sometimes when you can feel really stressed. So I always say to the girls when they feel a bit anxious, just have the dog on your lap, just mm. stroke the dog, and actually it 
in mindfulness, it's one of the things they, they suggest to do. Yeah, I think, and also when you get more irritable, I've talked about this before, when we're, you know, doing stuff and you get irascible because the dogs are nagging you, I think that says more about your yes. mental health and how, how you're at, Absolutely. where you're at in terms of, because I think when you're at ease with your pets, I think you are in a place of at ease. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. And we sh and that's really good when you say that because it does keep making me think, like, oh, t mm. stop it, stop it. It's because you're in that like, you're frantic place. You're irritating yourself. But it's oxytocin is released, you'll be which pleased is to the know, love drug. Yeah, you'll be pleased to know that this is a study that was not done in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, mm. This was a study done in the University of Michigan, Michigan in the US. Uh, and this showed that uh, it recorded the pet status of about 20,000 adults over the age of 50. Um, and it suggests that those uh, aged 65 and owner, over for over five years demonstrated higher cognitive scores, including word recall tests uh, compared to non-pet owners. And they very much say it's very specifically, though I never know how you can do this, people over 65. So if you've had a pet for five or more years and you're entering your late 60s or, or your early 70s. Do you think that's just because that that's the age group that people start to look at, that they start to research brains? Well, I, I think, you know, there's been <coughs> studies recently about how loneliness, people who are alone, lonely, don't talk to other people, aren't engaging with other people, aren't socially busy or connected. And that's why it there's an increase. The brain, yes. There's an increase in dementia in, the, <coughs> in that category of person. So I genuinely think this is nothing more complex than... Even if you're not talking to your pet, you're thinking about your pet's needs, yes. and you're thinking about what they're doing. And not just in an echo doing. chamber. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But but it is also <coughs> the release of oxytocin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a chemical thing that also happens mm. when you relax, when you feel love. It's the thing that when you're in labour, if you tweak your nipples, you can get more oxytocin. Did you know that? Uh, that's why. Well, I'm all, I mean, I'm always, actually, you know why I go down to the downstairs loo a lot. <laughs> tweak your nipples. Look up oxytocin. It's an amazing free drug that we produce ourselves. Um, Sarah, is it Sarah or Sarah was saying there that her father has dementia when she takes a dog round to see him. She sees him visibly relax. Oh, wow. So lovely. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, pets, are, animals are used more and more now in hospitals, aren't they? In mm. care homes to go in. They take their, their animals in. Actually, I met, I was at the um, Crufts Dog Show last year. And I met so many of those dogs. I can't remember what they're called now. Comfort dogs, something like that. Oh, right. And they're all the most beautiful dogs because they have the most lovely temperament. And Chi Chi could be one. Mm. Chi Chi is that mm. kind of a dog. Chi Chi just nuzzles her head into anyone. Toffee's that she codependent. Meets. Toffee, we couldn't. No. no, Toffee's codependent. But, but they can go into the hospital and um, and and they, and they really help. Mm. you know, in people's recovery. Now, anyone who's a food fetishist, sorry, we're not going to talk about toes, and anyone who's really petrified by toes, you'll be oh relieved God. we're not talking about Maddie's toes. Maddie's around the corner there. She absolutely hates feet. Um, so... <laughs> we're going to talk about... Uh, Are we not going to talk no, about No, we're not talking about oh, toes. We're, we're talking about it tomorrow. Yeah, now... A couple of stellar things happened last night, quite literally. A meteorite was spotted streaking across the night sky from Peckham and various other parts of the country last night. I've seen some of the films. Pop Good it in. Ship, lollipop, I lollipop. love meteorites and I, I'd like to be struck by one. Um, and apparently, oh, don't say something so stupid. And apparently the, uh, the, daily, the front page of the Daily Star <laughs> is reporting that we're about to experience one of the largest solar pulses in history, equivalent to something like 50,000 million nuclear uh, bombs. Now, that's obviously not going to be like nuclear bombs hitting us, but that solar pulse could play around with your Wi-Fi, it could play around with your 4G, 5G and all that stuff. And finally, Hi, Miss P. how pathetic has, our, has the UK's uh, start in the sort of international space race been? The rocket went up and it failed. <laughs> So it oh, was fired God. from... How much it money took was off, that? It's interesting. It took off from Newquay in Cornwall. So it was a big deal, a Cornish trip to space, uh, and they lost both the satellites. So I'm sure the companies that had the satellites on board were a bit, bit miffed. Um, guys, people are asking about the recipes from Saturday. That Yes. Now, what will happen is, because Betty is helping us from Jordan, these will go up on the day in future. That was our first show, so it was all a bit tits up. But they are both written up now. I just don't know where, where I put them. I don't know where best to put them. I think on the community page, did you say, Mark? So I'm going to put them up on the community page. I'll do that this morning. Um, that was for the vegan sweet and sour um, dish and my Swedish meatballs. So that will go up on, yeah, this morning. Uh, can we say a happy birthday to Hazel Marbon's daughter, Samantha? Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, happy birthday, birthday, dear Samantha. Samantha. 
happy birthday, birthday to you. you. And a happy birthday to Steph. Oh, thank you, Rebecca. Yeah, the Saturday show. Now, this is this really makes me laugh. Since we did the Saturday show, which we're going to do, this, this series is eight episodes, and then we'll have a little break and then we'll do another series. But um, it's, how, Mark, how many people have been saying it should be on TV? Like, people always say to us about our vlogs. Well, this should be on TV. The thing is, think of our channel as TV. Because everything we do on this channel we could not do on TV. Mm. Because as soon as you go onto television, you have so many people sanitizing, um, controlling everything that you do. Like, we, I wouldn't have been able to go, oh my God, I didn't cook the peas, I'll just put them on the plate, they're frozen. But just imagine they're cooked. That, that would cause ramifications up through all the channels of TV. What she put frozen peas on the so in a sort of discussion in the day's news, I couldn't have demonstrated how collapsing looks. Yeah, you couldn't have just got up that because how would the camera have caught you? But I just pick up the camera. So this think of this channel as a very special TV station that you were all a part of. Because lots of other channels home in on like, I'm just gonna open a box from McDonald's, whereas we try and just multi-genre it. We try and yeah. sort of hit you with all sorts of kind of content. Just yeah, to kind and of stimulate actually, not everyone, obviously yeah. not everyone's drawn to the same things, but there are people who like, you know, it's a reflection of interests and passions and, uh, you know, uh, and trying to be of use as well, so. And everything that we put on this channel comes authentically from us. So, you know, Mark's, Mark and Nanny Di's absolute passion for film, you know, that's why you get so much co brilliant content because it's coming really and from Maddie's, the heart. And, and you know, me and, and cooking, that's my thing. And, and, and so what you get on here is it hasn't gone through loads of people that are going to work it's out what they're going to get out Thank from you, Aaron. Sanitized. Yeah, it. Thank you, Erin. Sanitise. Yeah, what they're going to get out of it. We, we fall into doing what we're doing. We, we have a go at it. We see whether you're interested and you like the same things as us. And that's how it works. So... I, I was saying yesterday, even if a TV company came and said, right, OK, we're going to do Curly Cooks on telly, I, I would say no thanks. And we've, but we I have, really would. Yeah, but we've got some big news later in the year about coffee moaning. So, yes. Yeah. Yes, we have. And inadvertent um, news. <clears throat> inadvertent news that we were completely sidebarred by. So yeah, it's exciting. And also, as you've seen this channel evolve over the last couple of years, it will keep on evolving. You know, we... This is, you know, this is a full-time thing for us. This is something that we really are passionate about. And Mark's got so many ideas of other stuff that he wants to put on here that, again, if you have to jump through the hoops of television, you can't do it. Yeah. So. Anyway, guys, have a lovely all, day. Thank you for all your encouragement on that. But yes. this channel is for you. And also the Tim Spector uh, gut chat uh, is about to land now. And also, guys, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our fabulous content. Give me five minutes and it'll be up. I mean, the Tim Spectre. <laughs>